Hello and welcome to another Bushwhacker review. Today we are going to be taking a look at Ryan Blaney's Menards Talladega win for 2020. As always, take a quick look at the box. Once again, you just have your generic raced version box. Got NASCAR Cup Series, got winner sticker and raced version down there. Got 2020 race winner, 2020 Talladega Super Speedway winner. Got to render the car right there, standard finish. Made a total of 1,092 of these things. NASCAR Cup Series, standard finish. Got your winner sticker down there. Got the supposed 2020 race schedule. I still cry every time. 2020 Action Racing Collectibles, and you of course have your copyright and such on the bottom of the box. Here is the car itself. It took him winning in it, but we finally get a 124 scale black and yellow Menards car. Everyone always likes the black and yellow Menards cars, and for some reason they've never offered them up until this point. You know, like we've always gotten like, I mean, since this paint team started, we got like the blue one, we got a green one, we got a red one, but never got a black one. So, I'm definitely glad. I, like I said, I, I want, if Blaney's going to win races, I want him to win races and stuff like this. Like, win races in the alternate Menards cars that we would never get in diecast form otherwise. You know, like, don't just win in, like, the advanced auto parts car or something that's, like, we already have. Like, win in something like this that actually makes the diecast unique. Here's your race winning stat card, if you want to see that. Blaney kind of won this race like a douche, if I'm being honest. <laughs> He was blocking so bad coming to the line in this race. Like, he, like, he like wrecked Eric Amaroli, like, shoved Eric Jones, just pancaked his ass into the wall. It's like, it's like, damn, Blaney. I like how nobody cared because it is Blaney. Like, everyone was just like, oh, well, just, you know, hard racing for the win. Nobody cares. And then, but it's like, I'm like, yeah, re replace that Blaney thing with, like, say, Kyle Busch or Logano or anyone else. And everyone would be like, man, that dude's dirty. What the fuck? So... I don't know. It's kind of annoying how Blaney just gets away with that shit, but no one else does. I'm glad Blaney won the race. Like, it would not have been fun to see Eric Jones win the race. <laughs> Eric Amarillo would have been kind of fun, but Eric Amarillo needs to win a race that's not a play track race already. I mean, kind of so does Blaney, because he said two years in a row his only win was a one play track race and nothing else. As you can see, it is damaged down the right side from when he was body slamming someone into the wall. Pretty cool race version. Actually, the Menards color is definitely one of those cars that you either love the Menards color or you absolutely hate it. I do love the Menards car. It's it's just the most easy car to spot in the entire field always, and I love that. Like, especially in a play track race, like, you can just immediately be like, oh, hey, there's the Menards car. <laughs> like, I like that. But anyways, let's get down to sponsors. On the hood, you have True Wave Technology by Sylvania, Natural Light for Natural Living. Got Pennzoil and Ford, Mustang, number 12. Down the side, you got Menards, you got Knopf and Richmond in front of the rear wheel, you got Sylvania back here. On the C post, you have Advanced Auto Parts and Dex Imaging. On the B post, you have Ford, DXC Technology, PPG, Mazak, and Discount Tire. Has your regular contingencies and such up front. Ryan Blaney's name is a little bit sideways there. On the back, you have Menards and Shaw Floors. Got the Ford Michigan license plate and number 12. And on the deck lid, you got Maytag, Kid, Libman, Jack Lynx, Atlas, Moen, Cardell, Sylvania, Duracell, and Tarket. This is number 108. Got Blaney's name in the rear window, of course. Got the same stuff down the other side as usual. Take a look under the hood. Doesn't want to open. There we go. See on the other side of the hood, you have Menards and Powered by Ford. There's the engine detail if you want to see that. Obviously, no deck lid. The roof flaps, of course, do open. Barely. And there's the underside of the car, if you want to see that. But now let's get down to the race win details that everyone's waiting for. This car is very, very dirty on the front. It is a black hood, so it's hard to tell some of the dirt. But if you have this car in person, it is, like, actually very dirty. Like, the bottom half of this car is, like, a different shade just because it's so dirty. I have no idea if that's coming across on camera or not. You see, you have a little piece of, like, I forget exactly what that was. It was, like, a decal or something that stuck to his hood pin and was just flapping in the wind. Cool that they actually did recreate that. I did enjoy, I've already seen at least a couple people in one of the Facebook groups, like, get this car and be like, it's got a stupid chip on it. What the hell, Lionel? It's like, no, that's, that's detail. That's supposed to be there, people. But anyways, down the right side, you see the lettering is completely rubbed off of the tires, and it was body slamming, I believe, it was Eric Jones. 
And you see the right side is supposed to be all dented in. It's very marked up where, you know, you see right there where it was literally like crunched in. The right rear tire is also rubbed off with a big white line around the edge. It does have some burn marks and you see the side skirt is even kind of damaged and dirty down there. The back bumper is also very, very dirty. He was definitely getting pushed a few different times throughout this race. I believe it's got the like, they had, they were able to add like a film or something to the back, kind of like the old tandem cars. They were trying to make the cars not wreck each other every time you touched each other to avoid like another Newman situation. So that's pretty cool. It's worth pointing out, they actually did like detail this spoiler, like the plate track spoilers. I don't know if they've ever done that before, but you see it's got like the extra little like rivets and brackets. It's got the like, you know, line pattern on the very top edge where like the kind of wicker is. It's even got the like, I guess that's just like the serial number of the spoiler and everything. Like that is really cool looking. I've never seen them actually try to detail to match those like big plate track spoilers like that. I have to go back and look at a couple older play track race versions to see if it has that, but that is really cool. Definitely have to give Lionel credit for that one. You see down the left side, it's honestly pretty clean again. Got some dirt and stuff, but not really much of anything. Definitely a cool race version. Like I said, this is the only way to get this version of the Menards paint scheme. The primary they produced this year was, of course, the Jack Link's Beef Jerky car. I do at least enjoy that every single year they've been choosing a different sponsor for the primary, like, die cast. Like, they haven't, like, please never just copy-paste the same car. Like, if you're going to use the same Menards paint scheme, like, choose a different partner each year. Builds a collection with the different colors of this paint scheme. Then having, like, you know, don't offer, like, you know, Richmond water heaters every year or something. If you want this card as a brand new release, you can get it right now. It is honestly already disappearing. Ryan Blaney's pretty popular. All of his wins get rare. Like, his Talladega Dent Wizard win is rare from last year. The Pennzoil Roval win is very rare. So... If you want this, I'd probably say get it now while you still can. But I think that's pretty much all there is to say. This has been a review of Ryan Blaney's Menards Talladega win for 2020. Hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.